Good morning to everyone. John, can good okay. Um, welcome to Kirkbo Lutheran Church in Purley, Minnesota, to our parishioners here in house and to our parishioners online. Welcome. This is the third Sunday of Easter. Um, we'll do our gathering hymn, God is here first. So Once again, welcome to everyone. Um, we have a, a couple of announcements here. Uh, let's see here. Solem Lutheran Church in uh, near Holly is having a celebrating or is celebrating 150 years of God's grace, uh, June 23rd through the 25th. Um, and then Georgetown is having a car show. Uh, May 21st uh, so uh, put them on your calendars and uh, uh, be be great to uh, have everybody attend if they can so let's start with confession and absolution within the community of the church God never wearies of forgiving sin and giving the peace of reconciliation let us reconcile with God and with one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, Renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. And let's all join together with the prayer of the day. O oh God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we'll read Psalm 116, verses 1 through 4 and 12 through 19, responsibly. 
I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray, save my life. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord in the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. The first reading is Acts chapter 2, verse 14 and 36 through 41. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah. This Jesus, whom you crucified, now when they heard this they were cut in they were cut to the heart and said to peter and to the other apostles brothers what should we do peter said to them repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of jesus christ so that your sins may be forgiven and you will you will receive the gift of the holy spirit for the promise is for you for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him, and, and he testified with many other arguments and exhorted, to, exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from the corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The second reading is from 1 Peter Chapter 1, 17 through 23. If you invoke as Father the one who judges impartially according to each person's work, live in fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile conduct inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. Like that of a lamb without defect or blemish, he was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your trust and hope are in God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual affection, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of Im imperishable seed, through the living and enduring word of God, word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 35. Glory to you, O Lord. Now on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, 
What are you discussing with each other while you uh, walk along? They, they stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was uh, Clepas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened these past few days? He asked them, What things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to the condemned, to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he, he was the one to re redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not f find his body, find his body there, they came back and told us they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and the, all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning with, within us? While he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them uh, in the breaking of the bread. The gospel of our Lord, praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And the message for today, grace and peace to you and for, from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Looking at our gospel this morning, let's put the passage into a little clearer context. It will be helpful for us to look at what has been going on just prior to Jesus appearing to them in this story. We first read in Luke's chapter 24 about the woman going to the tomb to find it empty. They are reminded by the man in dazzling clothes of what Jesus had predicted and ran to tell the others. The disciples again have their moment of disbelief and Peter runs off to check it for himself. And last week we looked at this guy who got the unfortunate branding of being Doubting Thomas. Another visit to the disciples of Jesus after his death and resurrection. We now hear the story of the two who tell you tell us about their journey on the road to Emmaus. They are walking and talking about the death of Jesus. The empty tomb and the woman who claimed to say that he has risen with a man who has joined them on the road. This man who has joined them begins to point out to them what this Jesus fellow had said was going to happen and how all of what they 
were talking about was pretty much spot on to what they had been told. And still, they doubted and told him how they had hoped that this Jesus, the one who was being called the King of the Jews, would be the one to redeem Israel, and yet they were still questioning what had, ha had all happened. It wasn't until Jesus sat among them and broke bread that they realized that the man that had been walking with them, the man they were discussing what happened was indeed the risen, was the risen Lord. And when Jesus disappeared and they thought back about what they had discussed, they realized that even then, Jesus was continuing to teach them. Jesus was helping them to see the and understand through his references to the use of scripture and the word. Jesus was guiding them to what was written to help them believe, almost as though to show them that what was predicted was true and therefore had happened just as it had been said it would, would be. It's no secret to any of us that we are a people who love and live for strong and close relationships that couldn't have been any more evident to us than how awful it felt when we were apart during the COVID pandemic. We were reminded of how much we loved and needed our family when we had to spend so much time away from them. We live in a region where we have deep family traditions in which we gather with our family and friends, often to celebrate a holiday or accomplishments. All of these practices help us to stay more connected and remind us to keep those we care, we love and care for in our hearts. That's not much different than how it was for the disciples. They had been traveling with Jesus now for almost three years. Day and night they had been with, with him and now he was gone. Yes, he had appeared to them on occasion since his death, but it was now going to be necessary for them to live and work for the love of God in separation of their friends and leader. Our passage today is a, pa is a message to help those learn and understand how they can remain close to him and keep him in their lives and hearts. This passage is also a reminder of how you too can live our lives as disciples while we wait for his return. First of all, there is the clear and sure reference to scripture in this passage. Scriptures play an important role in the story just as they should play an important role in our lives. This story in Luke highlights the need for us to study scripture Jesus starts listing references off. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about with Moses and all the prophets. He interpreted to them uh, the things about himself in all the scripture. Let's be truthful. There are many of us who have become a little passive in our biblical literacy. I'm not naming you as one or who is, I am naming all of us, me included. I know I and many of you don't find or take the time that we perhaps should to immerse ourselves into the understanding of the word. We, we know that. We may think the Bible is hard to understand, especially that Old Testament, right? Sometimes it feels like what's the use? Or maybe we feel the answers in the Bible are old compared to the, the new questions of today, and they just don't fit anymore. But there are ways, even little ways, that can help us find ourselves. Excuse me. But there are ways, even little ways, that can help us find ourselves immersed, even if it is just for a few minutes each day through devotionals. There are so many 
uh, available today with all kinds of themes that one can relate to. So you, may, you, you most definitely can find one that's just right for you if you look. The Bible, the Word of God, opens up our lives to God's presence, love, and power and life-changing relationship with him. Second, we have the reference to the Lord's Supper and the sacrament of communion. That meal that helps us to keep Jesus and feel Jesus close to us in our daily lives. These three men have been walking and talking and now at the end of their journey, the disciples stop and invite their new companion to join them in a meal. Luke writes, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And what happens? Instantly, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. Do you remember that's exactly what Jesus said when they gathered for their last supper? And guess what? That's exactly what happened when we are fed in Holy Communion as we gather as brothers and sisters in Christ. It's through this sacrament the body and blood of our Lord, that we are being fed and filled and that God is touching our lives. Jesus is present each and every time we are nurtured and fed in our faith and in our relationship with Jesus. Finally, there is the reference to the road, a walk to Emmaus on a road that is traveled. These two encounter Jesus on a journey, on a walk, we encountered Jesus on our journeys and on our walks. We too can find Jesus as we wander and travel through our lives. We too can expect that he will show up in what we see, what we do, what we encounter, and what we look for. But wait, we need to be open and ready to notice, don't we? These two men were surprised to realize that they saw Jesus, just like how we too have times when we are surprised in seeing God at work. It can be something as simple as an act of kindness, and in, like in a drive through line, it can be seen or felt in a hug, a smile on a great job to another person. We can see Jesus through our eyes because of our faith, and when we do, it's like looking at those pictures of our loved ones and remembering those times that we gather as a family or group or friends to celebrate an accomplishment as I mentioned before. We can see Jesus as we remember the love and laughter and life that we share with others. So let us remember, let us be the shining light to others, especially now as our crazy world seems to continue to be divided with uncertainty and even darkness. Let us be the ones who share the love and grace of God with others. Through and in Jesus, we can open up our lives to his presence and keep him close to us as we travel and meander down those roads in our own lives. We are so very blessed to be promised the presence of our God on those paths. What a gift that we have been given to never be alone. Let us use those gifts and share those gifts to benefit us, nurture us and our faith, but also to benefit and nurture others. We all need to take those daily walks with Jesus, a walk that can help us refocus and refresh our hope in our own lives. Amen. The hymn of the day and offering is save savior like a shepherd lead us
stand? Let's all say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we'll do the prayers of the people. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of rebirth, the good news of your resurrection brings refreshment to a weary world. Following the woman at the tomb, empower us to boldly share your radical love our words, or through our words and our works. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As you breathe your spirit in, into the disciples, breathe your spirit of healing upon our creation. Nourish the earth with sufficient rains where needed and dry up the earth where there is too much. Strengthen us to counter the effects of pollution and destruction. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You prepared the disciples for the ministry by calming their fears and granting their, them peace. Equip our community leaders. Give them a spirit of peace and hearts that burn for justice. That their leadership reflects your love. Hear us, God, for your mercy is great. You come among us in unexpected ways. Send us to those who hide in fear or question your love. Be a healing presence for any isolated by addiction, mental illness, chronic pain, sickness, or grief. Lord, we especially lift up this day Heidi, Sonia and Roger, Veronica and Terry, Chris and Tom, Ann and Brent, Lynn and Joyce, Sharon and Frida, and Ron, and those we name silently in our hearts. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Resurrecting God, you bring to new life every day. Thank you for blessing us with companions on our faith journey, especially who's, who, who now rest in your love. Strengthen us with the eternal peace of your promise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers as praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. As brothers and sisters in Christ, let us say together the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth that is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for the blessing, the God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, blesses us by the power 
of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. The sending him is the king of love, my shepherd is. peace, serve the risen one, thanks be to God.